What's happening people? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. This week I'm taking some time out to talk about what's got to be one of my favorite tripods or combination of tripod things, whatever you want to call it. Next to me today is the Sackler 15 SB fluid head on top of these Flowtech 100 legs also from Sackler, aka the dream tripod setup. It has amazing and responsive fluid action from this head. The carbon fiber build on these flow tech sticks are going to make this whole system extremely lightweight and due to a couple things that we're going to talk about in this video it has got to be one of the most streamlined tripod systems I've ever used in terms of setting up and getting shot ready of course there's got to be some sort of catch going on here right well not really a catch but I'll, I'll put it this way I can pretty much guarantee that this speed balance tripod system works significantly differently than any other tripod you've used for video and that is precisely Precisely why I wanted to make this video to A, show you how awesome this thing is, of course, but also B, more importantly, identify some things that aren't so obvious right off the bat when like operating this speed balance system, either the Flowtech legs or the speed balance fluid head. So I suppose let's start from the top down. So like I said, I've got the 15 SB video tripod head, incredible response on this tripod head, seven stages of resistance on the pan and tilt axis. And also a bunch of settings for tilt counterbalancing. Even this whole tripod plate area can slide a bit back and forth with the use of this red knob right here on the right side. And again, I can't stress this enough, the build quality on this, just the response of making all of these adjustments, locking them down using all these knobs and pieces of hardware, exceptional. Yet with that note brings us to quirk number one about this speed balance system. So these speed balance heads use this touch and go quick release tripod plate, which is a really excellent system for getting the camera on and off of there, but it can be a little intimidating for two reasons. A, it's not super obvious at first how it goes on, but B, this thing could be a finger destroyer if you let it. So the plate itself is very simple. It has this like beveled lip on the front and back edge of the plate, so it actually doesn't matter which direction it goes on in that way. And honestly, getting this plate on the head is actually easier with the camera attached to the plate, but I'm going to show you without the camera just so you can get a better idea of this deadly spring action. Looking on the underside of the camera base here, you see this red switch. This is what activates the spring-loaded release for the tripod plate. So when the spring is unlocked, this switch will be all the way to the right. To get the quick release to attach, you grab that red switch under there, swing it to the left, and simultaneously release its little locking pin it has built in there, or it'll stop halfway. You get it all the way to the left until you hear it firmly click. See that that moving plate is now flush with that back edge there and this locking pedestal is now in the raised position and without the camera on it actually the spring is so powerful it'll even jump out of the head a little bit. Once it's clicked into the left position, you will not be able to operate this red switch anymore. It has to be done from the tripod plate. That is where this thing becomes a potential finger destroyer. That is absolutely enough force to break skin and it will not be comfortable. So like I said, I just did that with no camera attached just to show you, but it's honestly way easier doing it with the camera attached. With hands on the camera, you're probably not going to have your hands near any of these locking mechanisms. But now without that like super scary disclaimer, you can actually see how streamlined of a system that is. And last thing I think you need to know about this tripod head and then we'll move on to the sticks. And I promise this one is a lot less dangerous. It's about the leveling of this tripod head. So the way you level this thing is really neat and it's totally knobless and that's honestly kind of a theme with like this whole tripod but we'll get into that. So you're going to level this tripod head by clamping down on this little like springy grip thing down here. Kind of feels like just using like a regular old spring clamp. Just give that a firm press under there and that's actually going to disengage the lock that it has on the bottom of this ball part. And then once you're done with whatever adjustment you make that head is going to be in the exact same place that you released it. Again, it just lends itself to speedy operation. And with that, moving on to the legs. Operating these legs is just as streamlined as using that speed balance head. So these legs have a three-stage rising system, though you would not necessarily know that just by looking at it. On a lot of tripods, you're fussing with little adjusting knobs at each like section of where they telescope out. That could be up to like nine separate little 
adjustments just for a height change on a lot of other tripods. That's why these Flowtech sticks are so awesome. All of the rising action works off these large, easy to use, hard to miss red flip out handles. When you disengage one of these handles, the legs telescope out with like zero resistance. And you don't necessarily have control. Sometimes the inner leg will come out first. Sometimes the skinnier leg will come out first. It doesn't really matter on a tripod like this. It's just about accessing that height that you need, leveling it off, and then doing your thing. In my opinion, the most crucial part of this like handle locking system, it leaves all of the adjustments and operation of this tripod up here at camera level. Like I said earlier with a lot of tripods, to make a height adjustment, you have to go down, loosen, adjust, and then tighten a bunch of different knobs that go all the way down the legs of your tripod. It's awkward, it's time consuming. We've all been there. Look at this action rising all the way up. Boom, gotta get it all the way down for a low shot. Bang, this thing's on uneven ground. I'm not perfectly leveled in that weird scenario, no matter. I'm gonna finish off the job with this super quick leveling system. Look at my bubble, bang. I've honestly never used a tripod that was this ready to go. I just had to know how everything worked before I was able to get so fluid with this thing. The last part of this tripod that I think needed some clarification has to do with this leg spreader and the angle adjustments of each of these legs. So this spreader down here allows for a few different operation angles indicated by this adjustment knob down here. But after struggling with this for like an hour or so, I realized something important. The legs themselves have locks for the several stages of angles they will allow for, but they will only go as wide as the setting on the spreader will allow them to. And those locks, again, going with our theme, can be kind of confusing until you know how they work. Each lock is undone by holding in that little up arrow button while pressing down the part on top of it, kind of like a pinching action. And if it doesn't go, you might have to actually move the leg in a little bit to disengage the lock, let go of everything, and then now it will snap into the next angle it finds. And again, regardless of where the locks on the legs are placed, it will only spread as much as the spreader is set to. Just another possible hurdle to keep in mind there. I honestly thought this tripod was broken for like 30 minutes. And with the spreader attached and fully extended, this tripod can get pretty darn wide. Setting it up ultra wide like that is great when you don't necessarily need the height, but you don't want people to come near you. Ask any camera operator that has to work with crowds. And one more neat thing before we wrap up, you can actually remove the spreader to get this thing even lower lower, and I mean like way lower, like in hi-hat mode, which is really neat and is honestly a really pro feature. It's not a thing a lot of tripods can do and comes in handy hugely when you need it. And that works pretty much exactly the same way. Now you just aren't bound by the limitations of that spreader. So now with that spreader off, I can unlock the angle locks on these legs and they can go basically horizontal. Like what? You can go down as far to the ground as the head will let you before this little like level mechanism hits the ground and honestly if you wanted you could probably remove that little leveling mechanism down there and find a way to secure the head to the tripod in like another way which I think Sackler actually might make a product for anyways that is going to do it for this video on a couple of things that I think you should know about these Sackler speed balance tripods as always if you had any questions you could hit that comment section below and if you liked this video you could also hit that little thumbs up button it would also be be enormously helpful if you subscribe to the channel. Over 100,000 of you have already clicked that subscribe button. Let us know that you love seeing this content that we roll out every week. And speaking of that, if you're already subscribed, you can hit that little bell button that pops up next to the subscribe button once you do so, and that will keep you in the loop whenever we post new content. So people, is the tripod you're working with right now really all that, or does it even have a leg to stand on? So think about that one, people, and we'll see you in the next Next one.